basic announcements for this morning. Um, your Sunday school books uh, for the spring quarter 2023 are in the back. For those of you who did not get the announcement on last week, they're on the table and you're welcome to get um, whatever number you desire. Um, also, remember your Wednesday night Zoom Bible study, 7.30 p.m. Uh, and also remember your Sunday school lesson, which is located on the church YouTube channel. Uh, Brother Nehemiah Newman and Brother Calvin Williams are committed to present those lessons. And even if you miss them, then you can go back and you can always view even the old messages uh, that they have put on there. So that's all I have for you this morning. And log on to Cliff, please govern yourself. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 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 to everyone that's joined us online. And we uh, thank you for joining us. And also those that are in the sanctuary. Thank you for joining us this morning. Bless God for his goodness today. Continue to be prayerful. And there's one more week in the fast. Amen. 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 So we just thank you, God, for what's going on. If you noticed, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, there's a revival breaking out uh, at Asbury Seminary and several other schools as well. Uh, they've been just going for several days just having a worship. Having a worship. And so there's a revival breaking out. Amen. Amen. So we want to praise God for his goodness and love that God hears and answers prayer. Let's continue to pray. Continue to believe God for great things. of the first home security system. He's also credited the invention of the first closed circuit television. He was born in Queens, New York on October 22, 1922, and she resided there until her death on February 2, 1999 at the age of 76. The patent for the invention was filed in 1966 and it later influenced modern home security systems that are still used today. Brown's invention was inspired by the security risk that her home faced in the neighborhood where she lived. She worked as a nurse and her husband, Albert Brown, worked as an electronics technician. Their work hours were not the standard nine to five and the crime rate in Queens, New York City, in their Queens, New York City neighborhood was very high. Even when the police were contacted, the response time tended to be slow. So as a result, Brown looked for ways to increase her level of personal security. She needed to create a system that would allow her to know who was at her home and contact relevant authorities as quickly as possible. Brown's system was the basis for the two-way communication and surveillance features of modern security. Her original invention was comprised of peepholes, a camera, monitors, and a two-way microphone. The final element was an alarm button that could be pressed to contact the police immediately. Three peepholes were placed on the front door at different height levels. The top one was for tall persons, the bottom one was for children, and the middle one was for anyone of average size. At the opposite side of the door, a camera was attached with the ability to slide up and down to allow the person to see through each peephole. The camera picked up images that would reflect on the monitor via a wireless system. The monitor could be placed in any part of the house to allow you to see who was at the door. There was also a voice component to enable Brown to speak to the person outside. If the person was perceived to be an intruder, the, the police would be notified with the push of a button. If the person was welcome or an expected visitor, the door could be unlocked via remote control. The 
read an Apple Brown file for a patent on August the 1st, 1966, under the title, Home Security System Utilizing Television Surveillance. The application was approved on December 2nd, excuse me, 1969. Brown's invention gained her well-deserved recognition, including an award from the National Sciences Committee and an interview with the New York Times on December 6, 1969. Her invention laid the foundation for later security systems that make use of its features, such as video monitoring, remote control door locks, push button alarm triggers, instant messaging to security providers and police, as well as two-way voice communication. Her invention is still used by small businesses, small offices, single family homes, and multi-unit dwellings such as apartments and condominiums. Her patent was lately, late, later referenced, referenced by 13 other inventors, including some as recently as 2013. She was the mother of two children, one of whom, Norma Brown, went on to become a nurse and inventor. So our Black History uh, moment today is on Marie Van Britten Brown. A lot of the things that she did, I didn't even I didn't think that, you know, that would have been going on back then. Yeah. Because a lot of those things we are familiar with today. Mm -hmm. She did this back in 1960. Wow. Now it's come time for the proclamation of the gospel, which comes to us today through our own pastor, Reverend Darius Miller. But before he comes, we will have ministry in song. I found song of one case. I love you. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. The church say amen. Amen. The church say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Saints say hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is off the Lord. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship in my soul. Take joy, my King, in what you do. It'll be a sweet sound. We bless the Lord today. All of His goodness to us. We thank God for the presence this morning. Thank God for First Lady. The blessing she has given to me and Shady Dale. Thank God for me and leading us in worship this morning. Thank God for the praise team. Thank God for the hanging on the door and all of you who are present today. Ministers, Sister Lewis, and Brother Williams. And Brother Nehemiah and his absence this morning. We just thank God for all of you. He has done great things. Give him thanks and praise. Turn me again in your Bible this morning to Psalm number 40. Psalm number 40. We're going to read verses 5 and 10 again. Psalm number 40. It's 5 and 5 and 10. Psalm number 40. We give you verse 5 and read the New King James Version. Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you at all. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, my ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you do not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. Is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news. Somebody say good news. Good news. The good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. O oh Lord, you yourself know. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. New Testament text this morning comes from Mark Gospel chapter 6. This morning we'll begin reading at verse 30. Mark chapter 6, verse 30 through 34. And it reads, Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place, the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. This morning I read through Psalm number 40, verses 5 to 10, in Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and understanding of his word. I want to share with us briefly from the subject this morning, our theme, the good news experience. Our subject this morning is the work of the, of the kingdom continues. Amen. The work of the kingdom continues. Continue to let us pray. Father God, we bless you today. We thank you and we praise you for all your goodness to us. And our Father, we stand to share your word. We pray your blessing upon us, the word as it goes forth today. We often say, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, may it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Let's show people today, giving them all the glory and the praise. We praise all these blessings in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Subject this morning is the work of the kingdom. Each time we share from this theme, the good news experience, I remind us that uh, when we watch the news, it seems like the news comes on with bad news first as a way of capturing and captivating our attention. And I want us to know that uh, even though the news begins with bad news, uh -huh. there's still good news going on in the world. Yes, sir. And the greatest good news is that Jesus came and died on the cross that our sins might be forgiven. And it doesn't matter who it is. But John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that 
Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the good news of the gospel that you and I need to share with the world. We have this good news experience. We experience the good news in our lives and we know that our sins have been forgiven. We have the peace of God and peace with God. Amen? That's the good news that we need to share with the world. And there's so many people in the world today who are dealing with levels of anxiety and difficulty. And it's, it weighs on my heart as a pastor and leader in this day and time. Because sometimes I I feel like, and I remind myself that these are the people who I will be passing the rest of my life. People who are who have dealt with this level of trauma and anxiety. But the good news is that Jesus is the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? So the good news is always relevant for every time and season in life. So the word says in Psalm number 40, Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. And your thoughts toward us Cannot be recounted to you at all. If I were to declare and speak of them, they are more than can be known. So don't despair today because God is still doing great things. The fact that you are alive today and you can hear my voice and you can see me, it's a, it's a testimony that God is still good. Amen? Amen. He is still doing great things. Every once in a while, you want to tell yourself, God is still doing great things. Yes, sir. He has done great things. And somebody said, Bless. His holy name. So we bless him today because he is still doing great things. He's still making a way out of the way. In our lives, when we come up against trials and tribulations, that's the time to praise God. It's not the time to, to complain or, or worry, but begin to praise him. There's great power when we tell God how good he is. Has anybody told you how good you are today? That you're a blessing in their lives? It makes you feel good, amen? And in the same way, we're made in God's image and his likeness. Everybody likes to get complimented every once in a while. Yes, sir. And so is God, amen? He wants us to compliment him and let him know that we appreciate his goodness in our lives. So the good news experience, the work of the kingdom continues. Now, I mean, look through this, this, this text. It says, I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness and greater sin. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. O Lord, you yourself know. That is a reminder for us to, to tell the good news of the gospel. The good news of the gospel is here. The only reason it doesn't go out is because we have restrained ourselves. <laughs> we refused, uh, uh, we have not allowed the, the good news to flow through our lives. But I want to be those people who will say, I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. When we come together, when we meet our family and friends, to, to let the world know that God is still being good. He's been good to me. Our subject today is from the text, Mark chapter 6. It says, the work of the kingdom continues. And Mark's gospel is written that we might see Jesus Christ in his life of service and sacrifice. Mark wanted us to see how Jesus uh, gave of himself to transform the lives of people around him. And I want to be those people today in our day and time to, to use the gifts and the talents and the calling that God has on our lives is share the good news so that others can know and experience the great thing that God has done for us. In this text, I want us to see, uh, as we think about life and times today, uh, to see that the work of the kingdom continues. Many times there are people today who have, uh, dare I say, uh, abandoned the church. I've said they, they're not going anymore. But I want you to see that, that even though some people may have uh, fallen by the wayside, but the work of the kingdom continues. And in this text we see, uh, it begins by reminding us of the story of the feeding of the 5,000. But this text shows us that, that, that God still has work for you and I to do. Even in these modern times, amen? The text comes from the time when Jesus sent out the disciples two by two, remember? And he gave them power to, to heal the sick and raise the dead and, and to spread the gospel. And he told them, uh, in the places where you receive, you know, let your peace remain. If they reject you, then what to shake the dust uh, off your feet Amen. and keep on going. There was a day to recognize that the work of the kingdom continues. You know, three things in this text I want to, to, to recognize today. 
When we talk about the word. The first thing I want to say in this text this morning is reflect on what you have done. The text says in verse 30, then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had done. See, sometimes in life, uh, you need to make sure uh, you re re have a review about what's going on in your life. When we were kids, when we would go to Sunday school, we would go to the Sunday school class and then the teacher would say, who's going to do the review? We had to come out to the sanctuary and, and somebody had to tell the, 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 the saints who were gathered what we talked about in Sunday school class, amen? And many times as kids, when we got home, your mom or your dad would ask you, what did you learn in school today, amen? amen. And the word to uh, remind you to reflect on what you have done. And I want to say to us at Shadydale, there are times in our lives when we need to reflect on what God has done through Shadydale. And sometimes we might think that we haven't done very much. And, and sometimes we look around Shady and we wonder, when is God going to come through? When are we going to see the vision? When are all these great things going to happen? But there's one, one song where it says, uh, little is much when God is in. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. I want us to see today that whatever we're doing for Christ is going to last. No matter how big or how small it might be. Sometimes we, we underestimate the power of our consistency in the kingdom, amen? Because when God measures us, he doesn't say how many or how much. He says, did you obey me? Did you do what I told you to do? Sometimes we, we just think that it's all about the numbers, amen? How many and how much? But many times it's about us being obedient. What the scripture says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen? So I want to reflect on what we have done. You know, every January here at Shady that we have a, a, a quarterly annual meeting. And we reflect on what happened in the previous year. So it's important for us as the body of Christ to reflect on what we have done. And we see that after Jesus had sent the disciples out two by two, that they came back. The text says, they gathered to Jesus. <laughs> As the body of Christ, it, it's not wrong with coming to the sanctuary, amen, and gathering together. I know some of us gather virtually. We, we, we want to take the time to, to come together, amen. And and that that there's something about coming together that strengthens us, amen. It's an encouragement to know that I'm not in this by myself. I'm not the only one who went through these trials and these tribulations. I'm not the only one who, who went through Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. I, there are others who are going through this journey with me. I want to reflect on what we have done. And the text says they, that they told them all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. It's good to reflect on what you've done, Amen. In every area of life, we want to remember what God has done in and through our lives. To take that personal inventory from time to time. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10 says, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do ministry. So I don't want you to feel like your labor is in vain, church. Because our labor it's not in vain in the Lord. So let's reflect on what we have done. Remember that we have uh, fed the homeless. Remember that we have helped those who needed a, uh, encouragement. Reflect on the things that we have done and tell Jesus all about it. Amen? Because God knows. He remembers what we've done. We need to know that our labor is not in vain. The second thing in this text this morning I want us to see is realize you need to rest. Realize you need to rest. The text says in Mark chapter 6, verse 31, and he said, and he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. 
I want you to see in this text today that even Jesus encouraged his disciples to rest. And I want us to see today, in our day and time, that sometimes we can get so busy that the text says they didn't even have time to eat. That means they were busy, amen? amen. That also means that the need in the world was great at that time. There's always somebody who wants to use your time. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Always somebody who wants to call you up and say, you know, uh, I need this and I need that and I need, I need you and I need you to help me. And I need, there's so many needs in our society today. But you have to take the time to rest. Did you see that in the text? Yes, sir. It's not about uh, whether it was wrong or not. Some people think it is, it's wrong to take a break. Help me, Holy Ghost. Some pastors in this day and time, they burn out because they've just been going and going and going. And they believe that because they're doing the work of the Lord, they shouldn't take any time off. Take any time to rest. They should just keep on going and trying to heal the sick and save the world and do this and do that. But the text clearly says that, and it's not the words of Peter, James, or John. It was the words of Jesus. Jesus said, come aside by yourself. To a deserted place and rest of life. I'm going to tell somebody today, it's all right to rest while you're working in the kingdom. Amen? It's all right for you to say, you know what? I'm tired. In, in, in this human body, I'm tired. I might not, my spirit might be alive. And my, my spirit might be still be willing, but my body is tired. Sometimes, as a pastor, I, I thank God for Sister Williams and Brother Williams and Sister Lewis because uh, they give my mind the time to rest. Because when your mind and your body and your soul is always going, you can eventually break down. I want us to see today that even Jesus, <laughs> hallelujah, said, come aside by yourself. To a deserted place and rest away. But there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time. What about you today? Do you see all the troubles in the world? Yes. Do you recognize there's so much coming and going? Yes. Because uh, we're just, as I always said, I'm just one person. Yes. And sometimes, you know, I want to do it all myself. Sometimes I don't even ask for the help that I need. But, but I want you to see in this text that even Jesus said, you need to realize that you need to rest. My father said it to me like this, son, you need to come apart before you come apart. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Because sometimes you can just go and go and get in the grind and think that, you know, I'm young and I'm able, I'm, I can still do this and I can still do that. But sooner or later, your body will tell you to slow down. If you don't listen to your body, your body will say, well, since you ain't listening. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. So, he said to the disciples, come aside by yourselves to a desert place and rest of life. What a beautiful thought this morning. And we realize that we are human beings. Yeah. That's why, that's the greatness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because he was not just God. He was a human being as well. And he knew that he had to rest sometime. And I want to say to somebody, uh, if you're feeling anxious and, and there's a lot of anxiety in your world, why don't you just take a nap? Why don't you turn the TV off? Why don't you go to sleep for a while? Why don't you take a day off from work? Amen, somebody. Why don't you take a vacation and go somewhere you've never been before so you can have some time to release your mind? This might not seem so sanctified this morning, but I want you to know everybody needs to rest somewhere along the way. Look at Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2, verse 1 says like this. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he did what? He rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. See, God Almighty, Almighty. the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who made the heavens and the earth, even he rested. Amen? Amen. 
So what about you and me? We think about the work of the kingdom. The things that God has assigned to us to do. There are times in our lives where we need to rest. The work of the kingdom continues. And you know what? Uh, if you get it all, what, what, what God reminded me of, if you get it all done today, what you going to do tomorrow? So you might as well take some time to rest. Realize that you need rest. These disciples were going and going and going. And they didn't even have time to eat. So I want us to see today that even Jesus said, it's all right to rest sometime. Because the work of the kingdom continues. The third thing, the last thing I want to say in this text is recognize the work will continue. <laughs> As I was talking this morning, the work, the kingdom continues. Look at the text in Mark chapter 6, verse 33. It says, but the multitudes saw them depart. So, so they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitudes saw them depart, and many knew him, and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them. Many things. I want you to see that after they were able to rest a little bit on the trip, there was still work to do. I want you to realize that after you rested a while, the work is still there. You didn't miss anything. Amen, somebody? Amen. You didn't miss anything because the world in which we live in is still full of troubles. Amen? Isn't yeah. that what it said in Job? A man is a woman of a woman of a few days, and there's still the trouble. So you might as well take some time to rest because the work of the kingdom continues. I think about my journey. Uh, I was told by my, my, my family that I'm a fifth generation Church of God pastor. <laughs> Amen, somebody. That means my great grandfather, my great great, my great great grandfather, my great grandfather, my grandfather, my dad, and now me. All of us have been preaching somewhere in this world. So that means that the work of the kingdom has continued on. So I don't want to burn out and die young. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. I want to be able to do the work that God has called me to do. Amen. While I'm still here, I want to do what God wants me to do. And while you're still here, amen, while the blood is still running warm in your veins, you need to be about the Father's business. Take some time to rest, but see, see that the work still continues. Recognize that there's still, still something for you to do. You don't have to worry that it's going to run out of work. Amen, somebody? There's always going to be work to do in the kingdom of God. I've been reminded of the story in John chapter 9 where Jesus healed this man. It says, uh, beginning at verse 4, it says, I must work the works of him who sent me. Well, it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light. So I want you to see today that you and I, as long as we're in the world, we need to work the works of him who sent us. To be about the Father's business. To make sure that we're using our talents, our time, our treasure, our energy to make a difference in this, life, in this world. Jesus recognized that the work continued. There was still somebody who was sick. Somebody who was going through. Somebody who was lost and needed to be found. And in your life and mine, there's somebody around us right now who, who would love to hear a word of encouragement. Please know that, yes, Jesus saves. He still cares about you and me. And we need to be about the Father's business. So as we get ready to close this morning, I want us to remember the work of the kingdom continues. And don't, don't dismiss your value in the kingdom, amen? All of the disciples did something. They were all out there following Jesus' purpose and plan for their lives. But they wanted, to, they wanted to tell Jesus about it. Why don't you tell Jesus what you have done, amen? How you have blessed someone. Whether it's great or small, your value in the kingdom is there. Reflect on the work you've done. Realize you need to rest. And recognize the work the kingdom receives. Let us stand together. Today, if you don't know Jesus Christ,
Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you know you can know him? He died on the cross for you, and you can have eternal life. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, Lord, this is easy to ABC. To admit that you need the Savior. Do you believe that he died on the cross and rose again that your sin might be forgiven? And does he confess him as your Lord and Savior? I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word today. I admit that I've sinned against you. And I believe that you died on the cross and rose in my sins by your forgiven. Lord, come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of all my sins, O oh God. Help me to do your will. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Here with the Spirit. Help me to do your will. And I ask this in Jesus' name. If you ask him to your heart today, he has a purpose and a plan for your life. He will lead you and guide you from this day forward. I want to what Pastor already say, but there's so much going on in the world. Uh, is there, can I do enough? Is there enough that I can do? I want you to reflect on what you are already done. Knowing that you are a light in this dark world. If you just let your light shine, just remind Jesus, reflect on, on the great thing that you've already done. Realize that you need to rest. Don't just continue to work and grind, but come apart. Rest. Take some time to reflect and renew in your heart and your mind so you can keep on going. Because you got to recognize the work continues. There's still more work for you and I to do. And I want us to be available to share the good news of the gospel. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you today. We thank you for this simple word, a reminder that we need to be a part of the kingdom of God. Working in your kingdom. Help us to reflect on what we've already done. The things you have done in and through our lives. The great things and the small things of God. Help us to take the time to reflect today. Help us Lord, to realize that we need to rest sometimes. Sometimes the work gets too much. And the people are always around, but we pray today, though, Lord, that we will see that the example of, that you had, you gave us in your word. We can come apart and rest. To renew our hearts, to renew our minds, to renew our spirits, Lord. To rejuvenate our bodies. Help us to take time to rest today. Most of all, help us to realize that the work will continue. We haven't missed anything because we took a break. Because we re relaxed and rested. Help us, Lord, to be willing investors that will go all the way with you. So bless your people today. We love you. We honor you and we praise you. It's all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sidney. We thank those on Facebook who watch today. We God bless you. This time.